Hello, Ministry hey. Pay. Long time no see. Long time no see. How's it going in Canada? Good. Mm -hmm. One second. Let me turn my camera sure. on. One second. Hey, here we go. There we are. <laughs> you can see my laundry in the back. That's right. That's right. Well, not very high resolution. Yeah, I... <laughs> I wouldn't think it's laundry hadn't you told me, but okay. No, now now I know. <laughs> now I cannot unsee them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I sent a couple questions mm -hmm. um, uh, about 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of them, I think, are pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a lot of the questions I have are just kind of following up on some of the mm -hmm. things that happened with the OGP in mm -hmm. Taiwan since 2013. Mm -hmm. That does appear to be the first time that uh, Taiwan had some interest in joining the OGP. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that some, does that sound about right to you? Yeah, as far as I knew, um, there was a one uh, official bid. Um, I think mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, back when uh, Simon Zhang was um, deputy premier. Uh, I think uh, it's around mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. And and I I never saw anything in the news uh, mm -hmm. in the English news at least, and I didn't see anything in the Chinese news about what was the. Uh, the final resolution of that first bid. What happened to that first bid? Um, at the time, uh, the steering committee considered the case uh, and also considered uh, the fact um, that Taiwan is not a uh, UN member or a mm -hmm. um, UN-defined universally recognized um, uh, state government. Uh, and so I think the initial um, negotiation uh, was um, predicated uh, on this fact, uh, and um, it was not, I, I don't think it's uh, formally said that uh, it's because of this reason that Taiwan um, is not admitted, but rather considering this fact, um, the steering committee at the time did not, um, you know, um, wish uh, to, to accept uh, Taiwan's uh, proposal and the associated national action plan at the time. Mm -hmm. So at that time, then Taiwan also concurrently proposed a national action plan for the OGP at a, the same time. A outline, an outline. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, per the due process, the NAP will have to be uh, jointly discussed with civil society organizations. Uh, yes. But the uh, proposing government is responsible to at least set some high-level uh, outline to begin the discussion, right? For a consultation, mm -hmm. you have to have this outline. So, yes, Taiwan did prepare outline at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, from what I understand also about the OGP, they require that a uh, specific department or unit is in charge from the government side. Uh, and which side at that time did uh, Taiwan choose, uh, which I should say, which government department or unit did Taiwan choose to be in charge of the OGP bid? Um, I think it's just the administration, the executive yuan, uh, the de facto mm -hmm. uh, unit who drafted the initial plan. I think uh, all the uh, ministries related to the open government um, issues at the time contributed but I think the mm -hmm. one who assembled or aggregated um, the departmental or ministerial contributions is the National Development Council, also freshly minted at that time. Mm -hmm. And so has, has Taiwan continued to apply to the OGP since that uh, previous application? Not as such, not as like a uh, national action plan or like not formally like uh, the first mm -hmm. bit, no. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what was the reason why that it hasn't uh, uh, done a subsequent official bid? Well, the preconditions mentioned during the initial bid has not changed. Yeah. Now, I, I find it quite curious from the OGP standpoint, because I'm sure you've noticed a lot of their terminology uses things like member governments as opposed to member state or member country. Hmm. Uh, that kind of language seems to not preclude Taiwan from, from joining. Um, was that your thought also when you, um, when you went to Paris in 2016? 
were yeah, you looking for? When I went to Paris,、uh, I was there to explore several possibilities. One is for a city-level government to join subnational program,、uh, also freshly minted at the time.、Uh, and、yeah. I, I think I told the Gap Zero News uh, reporter,、um, who happens to be the first same person talking to me now,、uh, about、yep. that.、Uh, <laughs> that that, but but it's not a formal proposal. It's just an exploratory conversation, really. Uh, and far as I know, the conversation uh, started um, around that time. But、uh, during my、uh, kind of keynote-ish、uh, speech, I said,、um, "You know, we're, we're open to any、um, arrangement. We're not specific about、mm-hmm. uh, one particular venue or formality uh, of um, Taiwan's uh, definition." Right. So basically, I, I remained、um, open to any possible conversations. Mm-hmm. And was there was there any possibility that say Taipei or any other city in Taiwan could join on the subnational level? Is that a possibility still? Well,、uh, we checked the subnational、uh, charter, and one of the precondition at the time、uh, was that it has to be under a existing national、uh, action plan、uh, mm-hmm. country. So、uh, if the Upper level is not a national action plan. Then the subnational action plan has no nothing to hook to,、uh, and that that is、uh, still remains、uh, one of the outstanding issues.、Mm. So, so basically, Taiwan would have to join first as a member government before Taipei or Kaohsiung or Taichung could join as a subnational government. That's that's our impression at the time. Yes, that was, I see. That that was what two years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and that that probably hasn't changed. Also, then, from from your understanding, we we haven't received any indication that it has changed. Okay.、Um, what is the level of communication between Taiwan and the OGP? Is is there? Do you have any contact person, or is there anyone that you are relatively familiar with that you keep in contact with at the OGP on a regular basis? I wouldn't say on a regular basis, but <clears throat> there's、mm-hmm. several、uh, efforts, like the crowd law efforts, that、um, both、um, the co-chair、uh, Mukilani、um, and uh, our uh, designer Shu Yanglin、uh, both participated and is a signatory actually of the crowd law、uh, manifesto.、Uh, and so、mm-hmm. there's various open government related endeavors. That involves both OGP and OGP active members, and also active、mm-hmm. members in Taiwan's open government plan,、um, and also the Personal Democracy Forum and the New York、yeah. uh, training workshop afterwards. There's also plenty of、um, you know people who wear multicolored hats, right,、uh, and and、yeah. so on. So so I, I would say there's a ongoing discussion. But it's not specific about OGP or Taiwan's membership of OGP, but rather using open government、um, ideals or open government values um, to um, collaborate on specific projects and specific networks.、Uh, but it's not specifically about the Taiwan government and OGP per se, but rather on end of us of common interest. I see. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like I mean Taiwan would be. You know, such an ideal ideal partner for the OGP,、uh, just in so many ways. I mean, you know, Taiwan is a leader in open data. It's a leader in participatory, you know, participatory platforms.、Uh, I mean, the V Taiwan platform, the Join platform, are great platforms. Are good examples for other countries in East Asia. It has one of the strongest civic tech organizations in East Asia, possibly all of Asia.、Mm-hmm. I mean, it seems like you know, Taiwan would have. You know, a lot to to give to the OGP.、Mm-hmm. Is, is do, do they see that also, or or is that not something that they have noticed、uh, as of yet? Certainly, we have already contributed a lot. I mean,、uh, just by participating in previous、uh, the Paris summit, for example, there's plenty、yeah. of、uh, Taiwan participation, and even. <clears throat> This year,、uh, without any pre-planning, <laughs> there's、uh, also like 20 people from Taiwan, and the civil society certainly made a very strong statement that Taiwan has a active、uh, civic participation、um, community. And of course, the government, because of 
uh, you know, this year's venue. <laughs> uh, we, we cannot plan well in advance, but we did um, yeah. support uh, in terms of logistics and in terms of uh, the planning and scheduling uh, of the flights and um, accommodation and things like that. So, so I think the, it, it is by itself a show of um, mutual trust between the civil society organization and the government uh, in Taiwan in the highest mm -hmm. level. Like um, my office, we, we sent two people, right, to, to the OGP. So I, I would say OGP is generally aware that Taiwan is um, not only a qualified, but an outstanding contributor to the open government values. Mm -hmm. um, if Taiwan can't contribute to the OGP, what are some ways that you think Taiwan could contribute to open government or open data or the civic tech movement regionally, with perhaps the Asia Pacific region mm -hmm. or globally? Well, the GovZero Summit is a very good start. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but seriously, because, because it, it really is growing in not only the amount of attention that it receives from the global networks, but actually, after each summit, we see a lot of uh, like spawned international uh, collaborations that invites uh, people in Taiwan with similar experiences that they see in Gamzero Summit uh, to visit or to uh, be fellows or to uh, we get a lot of interest from also academics um, to to uh, study uh, the Taiwan experience in doing yeah. civic tech and so on. So I think just the civil society organizations here clearly play is a leading role in not only setting the agenda regionally on the topics you just mentioned, but also globally by positioning Taiwan as a partner. I love the term you use, say a partner as in partnership for the goals, uh, not just on sustainable development goals, but also all the other uh, regionally important agenda. And I think this position of partnership is one of Taiwan's strongest uh, when it comes to international uh, awareness that what, what Taiwan can offer. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, from from an international relations perspective, you know, Taiwan is is often uh, blocked from joining very important international fora uh, because of China's position on Taiwan. Um, is that the case with the OGP, or or you don't? Is it uh, something that could be potential, or is it not just because it's something that China is not interested in? They're not interested in open government. So they don't they don't care about this particular issue. I, I have not received any uh, message or indication that uh, the PRC uh, has or has not um, an interest on the open government partnership. I, I don't have any communication around mm -hmm. this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, generally, it doesn't seem like China is. I've never, in my experience, seen anything that says that China is is interested in this concept of open government even. I mean, I, we've certainly seen open data portals before, but this, this, this term of open government has not been bandied about by, say, for example, by the PRC or by Beijing from, from what I've seen. Does that, does that also match with your experience? Well, there is like a qualifying standard, right, that in, in the OGP that any participating mm -hmm. uh, governments uh, need to qualify before even submitting the outline of the NAP, right? So yeah. it, it is a self-assessment, but I, I'm not in contact with anyone uh, linked to or from the PRC uh, in relation yeah. to this self-assessment. I really, I really don't know. Yeah. No. Okay. So, I mean, okay. Um, if Taiwan can't join o OGP as a member government, I mean, what other ways do you hope Taiwan can participate in the OGP? There's various um, topic or thematic areas that OGP are currently actively looking into, right? There's the Open mm -hmm. Parliament Network, or OPEN. Uh, there's various networks around the topics uh, you just mentioned, right? Around uh, open data, around um, collaboration on civic participation or spaces for civil service uh, organizations and, and things like that. So uh, I think one of the very good steps is just to continue to make these themes vocal and apparent in venues such as the Gov Zero Summit or the various mm -hmm. other um, endeavors, like for example, the Taiwan Foundation for Democracy recently signed the Crowd Law Manifesto. 
And so maybe the crowd law uh, activities is one of the ways where the Taiwan, uh, maybe members of parliament, maybe members of administration can also showcase um, our commitment uh, to those open values. And so it will intersect naturally uh, with the OGP endeavors. So maybe, you know, formally as, uh, you know, members uh, who both participate in the same network or the same endeavor, or maybe informally, like people just run into each other in the Get Zero Summit. So um, I think that level, the operation level, is what we found the least resistance. And that mm -hmm. is uh, where we're focusing our energy on at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then one, one way, of course, that uh, I mean, Taiwan can participate in the OGP is by sending members of civil society to the OGP Summit. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I, I feel that there's, you know, it's a bit of a shame that, that Taiwan can only send members of civil society to it. And, and I'm sure you've seen it in, you know, the numbers of people that Taiwan sends compared to other countries in Asia mm -hmm. Pacific. Taiwan sends a huge amount of members of civil society to the OGP. Uh, you know, in, in 2016, they sent 13 members, which was the largest amount of members in East Asia, if we're talking about, say, for example, Korea, Japan, China. Mm -hmm. And then this year, I'm, I haven't looked at the other countries, but I'm almost certain with 20 members mm -hmm. from Taiwan, that's probably mm -hmm. also the largest amount of members from East Asia that mm -hmm. attended it. Isn't it, isn't it just you know, a shame that it's only civil society that could participate in the OGP? Well, I mean, I personally participated in Paris, and also people in my office also participated this year. Um, mm -hmm. I, speaking personally, not as a minister, but as a conservative anarchist, I have no problem of <laughs> uh, having, giving a keynote and uh, being introduced as the digital ministry of Taiwan, but labeling yeah. Taiwan as a nonprofit. Uh, personally, I have no problem with that, uh, for the record. Uh, but I, I do understand that our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other diplomatic relationship people would prefer something that's more official and something that's more formal. And I, I do respect yeah. their wish uh, in that way. I'm just speaking personally because I do wish that um, anything the government currently can do at least the civil society can have a picture of, have a context of the government's um, proceedings and eventually will maybe evolve into a multi-stakeholder governance uh, system, maybe not in my lifetime, but at least in this lifetime, what I'm trying to do is to making sure that uh, all the government proceedings, all the government projects, all the government regulations and so on, there's sufficient space for the civil society to participate in the agenda setting. So I have no problem. I don't think it is a shame uh, when I participate in Paris that I'm labeled as a um, digital minister of a nonprofit called Taiwan. Mm. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, would most, uh, I mean, uh, most people in Taiwan actually don't know about the OGP. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, there's, there's, the public has, I think globally, we can say that open government, open data, civic tech is, is still very much a niche thing. Do you think if there was wider, wider attention about what the OGP was or what open government was, do you think that there'd be more demand from the Taiwanese public for it to participate in the OGP as Taiwan? Well, part of my um, narrative at the moment uh, saying that we're focusing on SDG 17, Partnership mm -hmm. for the Goals, is to position civic tech and position open government as a instrument for cross-sectoral international collaboration for the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and mm -hmm. this is a role that is, that is more outward looking and that is not something that we do open government for open government partnership's sake, but we do SDG 17 to further right. um, the trust between the various sectors and various interests uh, in humanity. Uh, but I would also admit that SDG is also not a household name in Taiwan yeah. either. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's not Perhaps like not Canada either. Right, right, right. So it's not like it's gaining as much. So so at the yeah. same at, at the same point, um, I think in Taiwan, because the general population uh, values innovation, I think that's part of Taiwan's identity. Uh, is is where innovation happens. Um, and also in addition to industrial innovation, 
uh, Taiwan people also pride ourselves on social innovation, meaning that mm -hmm. innovation that works with the society, that solves social issues. And almost by definition, civic tech is a subset of social innovation. You know, like yeah. civic, social, right? Tech, innovation. Right? So, so uh, it, it is, I think, a larger umbrella that the Taiwan people can feel more comfortable identifying with, uh, because uh, civic to social is like the democratic process, the participation, and so on. So, if we position it as an instrument for more social participation, I think it's easier to for people to accept. And again, tech sounds like you know one fraction of. You know, engineers, right? But uh, but innovation—that's something that ev what everybody can get behind. So the National Social Innovation Plan is consciously embedding the civic tech values, uh, but using open government or SDG 17 as the you know rallying value, uh, but to enable the society to deliver on the common uh, sustainable goals together. And so I think mm -hmm. the larger social innovation umbrella term, at least, is this one that. Um, that my office is using at a time to describe something that certainly includes civic tech and open government, but not limited to civic tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, that, that's about it. My last question would be, if the OGP offered Taiwan membership, mm. how would you how would you reply to that? How would you how would you feel about that? Awesome. Um, that would feel great. That would feel awesome. Right. Um, so um, I, I think, yeah, the open government partnership uh, at the end is a partnership. So uh, yeah. I, as I want to um, have stressed uh, in our interview, Taiwan is a partner, regardless of whether we're an official member of any sort. Right. Taiwan has been a stable mm -hmm. partner to the open government values. Um, and so any way to mutually enhance recognition of this partnership for me is a step forward. And so that, that, that's it. So I think we, we're a partner regardless of whether we're an official partner and any mutual recognition is a good thing. Okay. Right. Well, that's, that's about all the questions I have then, Mr. Tang. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So I get to publish this on YouTube. You totally can. Okay. Absolutely. Feel okay. free. Let's do that. Yep. And I'll send you the link. Thank you. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah. Bye. All right. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.